Welcome again, my fellow Gamma Optimizer subscribers. Uh, this is the long promised uh, video for the tutorial of how to use all the little mini apps that uh, I usually post from time to time. So let's just start with, uh, with the easiest one. Let's just start with the Kurtosis app, which has the weirdest name, but it's actually a very simple app. I call it the Kurtosis app because the, that's what I am looking mainly on these little charts and looking to to see how Kurtosis looks like. And for those of you that don't know, Kurtosis is a statistical term that is giving you an idea of of um, how how frequent uh, big returns are in a particular day. So the tool this tool displays the Kurtosis and other statistical measurements for the four main indexes that we have in the US, the SPX, the NASDAQ, ROT, ROOT and the Dow Jones. No? But the information is basically the same. So what is this chart? This chart is like a real-time representation of the market. It's just that instead of being a price representation, it's a representation of returns. More exactly, a representation of log returns. Each little gray dot is a log return. And because it's a return, it's a relative value. So it's basically the one minute log return, which is, which in other words is the change that XPX or whatever is the index has endured in one minute. So as you can see, the dots, the little gray dots could be above the zero line, which, which the zero value, which means that it has been a positive return, the market has gone up a certain amount, or it could be below, the market has gone down a certain amount. This y-axis is percentage. So if, if you say 0 0.025, it means 0.025% in one minute. So statistically, you know, this is kind of a random distribution type of thing. You can see that the dots are scattered uh, kind of randomly around a mean. The blue line is the mean. In this case, for today, the mean seems to coincide with zero. But you can see here that the mean is actually uh, not zero. It's just very really negative. So from the moment the market opened until this very minute to 40 p.m., uh, the mean is, is is very small, so it's basically the market has just been oscillating back and forth. The chart displays dots in also in green colors and red colors. So, what are those things? Now, what are the red color, the red dots, and the green dots? So, for to understand, we need to understand some mathematical concepts. Uh, the blue line is the mean. And I am measuring the dispersion around the mean, which is the standard deviation. So the green line is what I what is called the two sigma uh, standard deviation. That means that there is, we are two standard deviations away from the mean. At two sigma, you expect to see a lot of the returns being contained between these two green lines. Now that's what we expect, and that's what we see. What we're actually seeing here, you notice that most of the dots are within the two green lines. But once in a blue moon, you get returns that are outside those lines. So that's what I colored in green, so you can quickly identify two sigma returns. And those are returns that are between the two sigmas and the red line, which is a three sigma move. And returns beyond the, the red lines are very rare. Now, in a, in a random distribution, it's going to be very infrequent that you're going to see returns that are beyond three sigmas. And here we have actually two today. We have one right at the open negative return and then another one just before 11. But the thing is with the realized volatility so low, with the standard deviation so low today, <laughs> you know, this this really doesn't mean much. You know, this red, the, the, the three sigma line is, is so close to the blue line that it really doesn't take much to have a dot outside it. And then if you look at the title, the title shows all of the statistical quantities. You know? So basically the, the title is showing all the moments of the distribution. It's showing the skew. This, is, this means that this particular distribution skews negative. In other words, would you have more negative returns than positive returns today? Uh, in, in a pure random distribution, the skew should be zero. No, there should be no skew. Kurtosis is quite high today. It's very high kurtosis. Kurtosis should be always around 3.0. Uh, 
uh, in, an, in a Gaussian distribution, in a normal random distribution, the reason the kurtosis is very high is because we have three red dots. And in a normal distribution, you will only expect to see one red dot in a whole day. You know, so so today we have like a few moments, but as as I mentioned before, the day has been so flat that it really doesn't take much to to kick kurtosis out of uh, out of equilibrium. the The most important thing, if we don't care about red dust in the past, is this is like meaningless to us because this is the time axis. If you start seeing red dots appearing here. Uh, you know, just the most recent ones, then you can tell that something is going on in the market. So far, everything is great. That's not red. That's not no uh, action out of control. It also displays the mean of the distribution and the standard deviation in in the, f the format. This is a percentage format. And I just kind of display the standard deviation in the two formats that are easy to read. This is the pure statistical format, like the standard deviation is 0 0.0. 1% or I can represent this into an annual realized volatility as you are used to which is 3.37 this is a, by the way incredibly low realized volatility this is probably the lowest I have seen the market ever I don't know in like 20 years of my life I haven't seen the market with such a low realized volatility this is nothing is going on today in the market and you can see this is consistent for Nasdaq DJI uh, rot seems to be a little more volatile today, but in general, ROT is, is more volatile than the other markets. But yes, today is a very interesting day in terms of intraday realized volatility. This little tool uh, updates, as you can see, every 30 seconds. So it kind of do, it does real-time updates. And it's useful for you to know what is going on. So right now, from this thing, I look mostly at the SPX, but in general, you can look at anyone and conclude the same. Is yes, nothing is going is happening in the market. There is very little realized volatility. Cortosis is high, but because of all red dots, so that doesn't mean that there is no panic buying or pa or panic selling. And and the the day is skewing negative, so that means the day has is more negative uh, returns than positive. Not by much, but it's still negative. That means that means that there is a little pressure to the downside, but not that much. So this is the this is the Kurtosis app, uh, and if you have any questions, just don't hesitate to ask them in the room, and then and then I'll move to the next one. Now we move into what I call the trend apps. So I have a bunch of trend apps uh, to measure trends in the market, and they work in different ways. Now each trend app does a slightly different thing. So this is what I call the slow trend app. This is what you can find here. It's called trends. The slow trend app um, is called slow because it's, it actually measures trends in intervals that are kind of long, like 5 minutes, 10 minutes, 15, 20, you know, those are minutes. And also measures the trend for the whole day. Uh, of course, this is a only intraday trend. Now, the, the trend is useful for the intraday. It's a very simple app. It has the plot of the market. This is kind of what price has been doing the whole day. And the first thing you should look when looking at this little app is look at the day. So here is a gray bar. It means nothing has happened today. So during the day, there is no a strong trade trend during the day. And then depending on your time frame, the, the, the tool is telling you something. For instance, here is like, eh, this is kind of like a little upside trend, not too much. It's, it's kind of gray. To see a good trend, you need to see a, like an, a strong uh, green thing. And then it, 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 it also updates every 30 seconds, as you can see, it kind of updates real time. And you can see the trend. So basically what this graph is telling you, nothing is happening in the market today. I guess this is not very useful for a, for a demo, but so we could look for something else that could have like a positive trend. Let's look at Apple. You can type the name of any symbol. Let's see if Apple has useful trends. Okay, look at Apple. Apple, the first thing I told you, there is a trend for the day. This is clearly a a uh, day with a trend up. So the day has been trending up the whole day, which is good for like, now you know what is going on with Apple. And then at the shortest scale, we can see that in the last hour from the five minutes to the 60 minutes, nothing has happened in Apple. So the last hour hasn't seen many action, the last 45 minutes either, the last 30 either. So, and you can see it here in the graph. No, probably 
the, you know, Apple hasn't seen much action since like 1.30 p.m. So, so this kind of the trend tool, uh, what is this useful for? I don't know, I mean, <laughs> if you're an intraday trader, it can give you an idea, it can provide an extra set of eyes for you, an ex extra pair of eyes to confirm your thing. Or if you're a counter trend trader, you can bet on a change of trend. Right now, there is no trend whatsoever here. So I don't see how you can use it for Apple in particular. But, you know, it's useful now. It's useful if you are counter trading, uh, counter trading or if you are trading with the trend. So um, the, these colors are not arbitrary. These tools underneath are using a statistical equations to measure the trend. The trend is just not simply um, like mathematical computations that are just arithmetic or oh, like the, the current price is higher than the previous then with an uptrend and, and that's not how it works the way this thing works is basically using the statistics using something that is called p-values so this little tool is actually computed p-values for the current move compared with all of these intervals so these intervals are defining a sample of, of a population a sample population and then I'm computing the p-value of the current return um, compared with a sample population and that's how it's computed for instance here the day it, it means that the this return this mean we are seeing for the population of all the returns of the or daily returns means that we are having an uptrend today the numbers on the y-axis here are meaningless they don't really have meaning uh, I just put numbers so to coerce these bars to do something but usually the bars move from gray and they start changing colors as you can see like yellow this yellow is as you see right here in the 10 minute uh, per time period uh, it seems that a new uptrend is being developed right now it's turning yellow and it's going to start turning green and green so that's a confirmation that a trend is appearing so, so it actually it's a good mo moment to see that something is going on here in Apple uh, at this moment and then let's move to a different trend tool this is the fast trend tool it's called new trend uh, and then notice that it works very different I, it kind of gives the same answers than the previous one but it's way faster in this tool the intervals are just minutes from 1 to 10 so it's very short you cannot see daily trends here you cannot see what happened in the last hour you only can see what happened in the last 10 minutes and you notice that this is Apple I, it kind of agrees with the slow one the 10 minute bar shows a clear positive trend and it shows that the trend actually is sustained up to five minutes, you know, like the five minutes bars show the positive trend. But the one minute, two minute, and three minute bar are not showing trends at all. I mean, it kind of started 10 minutes ago, <laughs> and then about five minutes ago, it kind of started slowing down. So, so this is useful for some of you that, I don't know, I guess you guys like to see things happening really, really, really uh, real time. So this trend tool, is providing the faster trend analysis possible so yeah, so I don't know I mean it could be a nice thing for instance you could see that there is a strong trend in 10 minutes and then you start seeing a negative trend in one minute like a red line here then it's very good for you counter trending counter trend traders like because you can see the trend will change so so the best configuration right now there is a small negative trend which is basically non-existent it's great but it's negative no so you can see it here is it's coming down but it's not enough to negate the uptrend we had before but in in the case that you can see these trends in 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 different directions it could be a good sign that a trend is changing if you have like a longer term trend in green and then short term trend in red then it's a big change big change like for instance right now at the four minute level we are seeing that a downtrend is appearing right here in Apple and it disappeared the, the uptrend that we had it just disappeared because it changes so quickly you know so this is a it's a fast trending tool and again the usefulness of this depends on your style of trading and I don't know what you guys are looking for this is just a, a tool that reports things I mean it's not being meant to use for anything else just to report the current trend um, and also uses 
the same p-value computation. It's a mathematical tool that uses a statistical p-values to determine if there are uh, strong trends happening at any intervals. Uh, the color convention is the same. Gray means nothing. Uh, yellow is kind of like, yes, a trend is appearing, but it's not statistically significant yet. Once it switches to green or red, then there is a statistical significance to the trend. Uh, and as, as you, again, as you can see, it updates every 30 seconds. So this is for the intraday trends, trend tools. Uh, I hope you enjoy them. And if you have questions, please, again, let me know in the Gamma Optimizer room. And then I'm going to move to the last tool we have, which is a longer term uh, trend tool. This is the longer term trend tool. It's a, I call it the M5 Momentum tool, which is a fancy name for it, but it's kind of accurate. <laughs> for those of you that know the heuristics behind it, it's very accurate naming. Uh, don't let the name confuse you. You can also pick whatever symbol you want to use, the interval daily or intraday, but uh, daily is more useful. I don't know what you want to see intraday. If you want intraday, you better use the previous two that I, I have. So in this case, because I have been using Apple now, you can see the last 20 periods, uh, 20 periods, 20 daily periods is approximately one calendar month. And the, and the tool is displaying a chart that it should be very simple to read. Uh, there is a magenta line, which is the momentum. And as long as the magenta line is positive, the momentum is positive. Doesn't matter where it is. So right now, this we happen to be on the positive side, but here it was on the negative side, but it was still a positive momentum because the slope is positive. That's what you want to know, the slope of the line. And you remember the positive slopes are like this, from they grow from left to right, and negative slopes are the opposite. I can show you the negative slope before. So. The chart contains the only, it only displays one piece of information. The only piece of information that the chart displays is these cyan dots. The little dots are the M5 returns of Apple, which is the technical term. It's just basically, it's measuring weekly returns for Apple. That's what it is, the, 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 the weekly returns. So you can see this cyan dot is substantially higher than the previous one that is higher than the previous one. And so that's why, um, Apple is, is it has positive momentum and what is the positive momentum is so strong. So um, the magenta line doesn't really exist. I mean, I could just have plot the CN dots. The reason I put the magenta line is just to aid visually help us identify the momentum. So, so the magenta line, for those of you that are mathematically inclined, you know that this is a smooth function. It's a function that smooths the the cyan dots, this is a polynomial a smoothing function. It really doesn't have any meaning mathem <laughs> mathematically or otherwise. It's just a graphic aid to help us visualize what is going on. So it, it really helps us visualize that uh, momentum is going up for up. You can see f momentum for other things. Let's look at GDX, which is a case, it's a crowd favorite. GDX is very interesting, and this is like a free analysis for you guys. <laughs> and you can see the momentum. GDX has a tremendous negative momentum, and probably around, it started to turn, but at least more realistically, around May 1st, it has started to turn. And even though uh, today GDX might, might be negative, the momentum clearly is a positive momentum. So this is actually good news for GDX lowers that at least from a momentum point of view is, is getting a better momentum. Why? Because even though the cyan dots are on the negative region, so that means GDX has been losing money. What this means is that GDX is losing less money than before. I mean that the, that the returns of GDX are less bad than they used to be. And if, they, if every day the returns are less bad, then it means the momentum is positive. Eventually, this is going to carry into the positive side. So the momentum tool is really good because momentum doesn't change dramatically from one day to another. Like you can see, it's a very slow change. And the other good thing about this particular momentum chart is that is the connection to price is connected to price, but not in the way you think. I mean, like right here, the momentum is positive, yet price is negative. 
However, price eventually will catch up to momentum. And and if you know the history of this from April 10 to April, May 1st, you can see that it is very accurate. Even though we have these nice positive returns, momentum was slowing down and GX was actually coming down in price eventually. And right now, even though we have negative prices, momentum is positive and I, it, it is very likely it will catch up. This tool is different. It doesn't update every 30 seconds. This tool updates, uh, well, I mean, it is real time too, but I, it is a daily tool. So there is no point on updating it. You want to see, like, like uh, you want to force a redraw, you just can click plot again and it forces a redraw. Like for, if for instance, something major happened during the day, like a gigantic jump in price or whatever, you can just replot it. But in general, because this represents a weekly thing, uh, even, uh, 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 even the change in one day will not change much by by price. No, like I mean, the M5 thing will not change much every hour or so. So you can use it this every day to to see. I'm going to give you a freebie for the metals complex. Look at GLD. GLD, on the other hand, doesn't seem to have a positive momentum. Uh, I mean, gold seems to be having negative momentum even though this CN dot is higher than the previous one it might indicate a turn because once you start seeing CN dots higher and higher well this magenta line will will be interpolated higher and higher uh, uh, on this direction which becomes positive as low but so far momentum has to be considered negative and the CN dot even though it's a positive development today for gold uh, you have to see more of those like going up 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 in order for momentum to change. And let's look at silver. And silver, wow, silver is actually having positive momentum. I didn't realize this. Uh, momentum was very, very negative, and it seems to be turning since the same date, May 1st, around here. Like today's return, weekly return is very good. It's, it's substantially higher than pretty much everything else. <laughs> Going farther back a while. So this is actually a good sign, and this is also uh, the thing I showed you before, like like imagine SLB uh, f on Friday, the, the only CN dot was this one, but this CN dot higher is kind of confirming the the trend. And I bet tomorrow you get something higher around this area, it will be also confirming, even more confirmation that the trend is up. But the returns are heavily negative. I mean, look at how far from the zero line they are. So they, they have to come up all the way here to the positive sign for you for you to actually see like, like a nice positive momentum. But right now momentum is positive. You could you could kind of trade to the low side around here in silver. And finally let's look at SPX, the, the last free analysis thing. Oh in this tool I think you have to put like carrot SPX. I forgot. It's a little quirk of the tool that I have not been bothered to fix. So SPX is weird. SPX was kind of momentum was coming down, down, down. And then last Friday we got a nice jump. But I mean, it was not a, such a big jump. And today the, it's not as good as last Friday. So the momentum seems to be negative for SPX, kind of turning, slowly turning here. Uh, because the slope here is not quite negative. You you could argue, make a good case that the slope is almost zero here. So I will say that SPX is at a neutral, neutral uh, trend. So, so there is not really an uptrend or downtrend right now. It seems to be really neutral. Would you have to see more more cyan dots to kind of figure out what is going on? And this is so far for this. I sorry it got a little long, but I cover uh, four different tools. So I hopefully just feel free to rewind, watch, and ask questions again. I hope you guys enjoy this little tutorial. Thank you.